Hey, Chandler Bolt here, and joining me today is Jonathan Hardy. Uh, Jonathan is the co-founder of Leaders.Church and Church University, two online platforms to help pastors master their ministry and leadership skills. Uh, he's also the author of the upcoming book, uh, very exciting. It's called Arrow Striker. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to be talking about behind the scenes of this book, uh, how to grow your ministry or your faith-based business using a book. Uh, and if you're watching on the YouTube channel, we're going to be doing it from, I mean, this is one of the best, it's like, this is like the chipping Joanna Gaines, uh, just <laughs> major, I, I'm jealous of this aesthetic that Jonathan's got going on right now. But, uh, so, so we're in for a treat. Jonathan, welcome. Great to have uh, you. I can't, yeah, well, thank you. I can't take credit for any of it, but, uh, I appreciate the compliment. So I'll pass that on to my wife. And, uh, <laughs> I'm yeah, in the middle no, of a renovation uh, on my first home right now. So these are like. Mark this down on a list of things that I never thought that I would I would uh, notice, and I guess I never did notice until now. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's so, awesome. Hey, well, I appreciate appreciate the time and uh, look forward to the chat. Yeah, glad to have you here. So, I guess let's start with this. I mean, you know, you've been in ministry for fifteen years. Uh, you, you know, I guess started on pastoral staff. Uh, at a church and built that up to thousands of people in weekly attendance. So you've got that ministry side and then now you've got the, the more faith-based business side or side with leaders.church yeah. and a church university. So why a book and, and, and why now for this book specifically? <clears throat> well, there's a, there's a lot to that, but um, you know, because this is a faith-based book and, and I recognize not everyone this listening might be a, a, you know, they have the different faith backgrounds and such, but, for me, th this is this is a mission that um, I feel like I'm supposed to um, ta tap into and, and step into. Uh, it really goes back to 15 years ago. I, I even hate to admit that the idea for this book came 15 years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, I just sat on it. One day, the chapter outline just basically came, just cranked it out. And then I sat on it. And every so often, ideas would come. I'd go intersperse some thoughts and had this running word document, but I never took action on it and up until about a couple of years ago. And then I just was really feeling prompted um, just in my personal prayer time that I, I need, I need to do this. I need to get this thing out. I got to stop talking about it. My friends and family are probably sick of me talking about, Oh yeah, when I write a book someday, blah, 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 it's, it's time to go. And um, so that began a journey of me saying, okay, Hey, let's do this. And I went back, pulled up the document and just started working on it. And um, so the, this whole, the whole why behind this really goes to, I, I felt like I was supposed to. And, um, you know, the, the book is a very unique book. It's, it's titled Arrow Striker. And uh, my subtitles live with purpose and leave an eternal impact every single day. And I base it on a story in the Bible. And um, it's, it's a, a one of, it's like a real small Bible story in the old Testament that just popped out of nowhere one day for me. And it, it was, it was just like, I had this divine download. I mean, it was like, this is, there's a book here. Uh, off the story and and uh, and so that was kind of the, the the really the genesis of it for me and and why I've uh, now gotten it into writing. And so let's maybe touch on that for a second. Was it was there an inflection point or what spurred you after fifteen years of kind of having this in the background, or I guess how many ever years of having this in the background? What was the the kick to say, all right, I talk about this in the in in beginning of this book, which I'm pretty sure I've seen you post a picture with. Uh, and, and maybe, <laughs> you're right. Maybe we'll mention uh, mention that later. I, but, have, I um, have the blue version. Oh, you got the blue version. Oh man, yeah. I got. I didn't yeah. ship you a new version, or did it get lost in your old home? Um, we'll get you a so, new. We'll get you the the second edition. Um, oh hey, of, all right. Of, and for those who are on the YouTube channel, this is my book uh, published. The second edition. Um, it's the Proven Path from Blank Page, ten thousand copies sold. So. It, yeah, what what spurred that on? In the beginning of that book, I, I talk about, you, you know, it's important that you have a why, and then it's important that you have a why now. And and mm -hmm. I, it, I, it seems like you had a why behind that book, but then there was a why now that made it prevalent. What was that? Yeah. Um, I, I think in hindsight, it was good that I sat on it for a while, uh, because uh, at the time I was 25. Now, uh, time of this recording, I'm 40. And so uh, a lot of life experience has happened since then. And so it really was these last couple of years, um, actually really during the season of COVID, I think was a big part of, you know, life just changed for everybody. And I think that was a point for me to say, okay, um, 
what's next here and what does this look like? And, and as you mentioned, we, we were actually uh, part of helping start a church. We had moved from Springfield, Missouri to Kansas City, Missouri. And so we'd been living there for, uh, at the time, six, seven years. And, uh, and I had stopped doing my more in-depth roles that I was doing originally when we helped start the church. And so that began the journey of, okay, what's next for us? What's next for our family? What's next for me? And of course, in the back of my mind this whole time, um, I'm like, I'm thinking I got to write a book. I got to write a book. And I didn't have, I don't think I really had any revelation, so to speak. It was just one day uh, or a series of days. I just got to the point where I said, you know what? Now feels like this is the time and there's no better time than now. Um, and I've got a lot, of, a lot of other ideas. And so I'm like, well, I mean, if I'm ever going to get going on this, you just have to start. And, uh, and so that really was like the, the, the catalyst for me to say, okay, now's the time. And because of COVID and the uniqueness of that, um, I was able to use some of the downtime to get away and have some writing seasons and, and just crank it out. Cool. Now, yeah. you're obviously, you're in ministry and, uh, or you were in ministry and now you run a faith-based business. So I think it probably seems pretty obvious that the book would be overtly faith-based and uh, you know we work with a lot of authors sure. it's uh, who write faith-based books if i'm i'm a christian my brother play, plays in need to breathe so i think there's a natural connection uh in sure. into a faith-based community there but how i think this is something that a lot of people struggle with is how much of my faith do i put in my book um and again yeah. I, you know it kind of feels like may, maybe it was for you maybe it wasn't that that for you it might be kind of obvious and straightforward mm -hmm. but did you ever wrestle with okay do I do I go fully faith based do I go partially do I include some of it all of it or how did you kind of come to the conclusion of 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 writing it the way that you did Yeah you know for me it it was um it was pretty clear that it's it's it, this is all in faith based I felt like the the whole book concept is really it is you know unashamedly it's geared toward the Christian audience. Now, with that said, I I know we we actually uh, gave a kind of a pre-release copy to a um, a local friend um, who's kind of just you know not real into Christianity, and um, you know I think it would be applicable because the whole idea really, without going into the details of of the story, is is making a difference and. Um, and the, the, the story in the Old Testament is about this guy who was the, the king of Israel who was supposed to strike his arrows. Um, and, and it was this figurative representation of the physical battle victories that they were going to get. Um, but what happened is he stopped and he gave more of a half-hearted effort. And so I take that concept and say, hey, we need to, we need to uh, figuratively strike our arrows every chance we have to make a difference. And so it's clearly geared toward making a difference from a spiritual standpoint. But a person who's not of faith would still could, could still easily read it and say, oh, you know what? I could, there's things I could do. I could give to a charity. I could do this. I could do that. I could, you know, and, and ways to make a difference. And so while it's all the language is, is very spiritual, it's, it's definitely one of those things that anyone could read it and be like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, I think that there's some good thoughts there. So at least that's my hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So, and I think sometimes where people might get frustrated is when it feels like the bait and switch. And so kind of what you're saying yeah. is, uh, I mean, if you just read the first uh, line of your book description on Amazon is God has more he wants uh, to do through you, right? Uh, yeah. God longs to intimately know people and give them abundant life. So it's very clear, like, okay, this is a Christian yeah. faith-based um, uh, book. And then, you know, if yes. people want to buy it and read it and aren't of faith, they, they can still get value of it, but they're not going to feel like they were uh, uh, baited and switched and it's like, it's kind of tucked in there and they didn't know what they were purchasing, uh, which I think is sometimes important. Mm -hmm. What would be your advice for people who maybe it isn't so straightforward? How much of their faith do they include or not? Um, any thoughts on just how people can discern that? Um, you know, for me, it's probably, um, you know, the, with the way I would roll, it's, it's more of a matter of prayer and how do you feel led? What, what, what seems to just come naturally? What seems to resonate with what you're saying uh, because there's definitely ways you can incorporate concepts of of having an impact or or whatever that looks like without being super um uh, super overt and there's a lot of biblical principles in life or that are applicable just to life in general uh, you know whether it, whether you're talking about um you know sowing and reaping or being encourager 
or generosity, or, you know, you can just go down the list of, of just things that you can do. And so, uh, you know, you wouldn't necessarily have to, to do that, but I think it's really more of like that gut intuition, yeah. you know, what do you feel like you should do and, and how, and how much, I don't think there's mm. a right or wrong or, or, um, you know, it's, it's probably very subjective to that, what you feel like you want to communicate. Yeah. So, that's great. Yeah. That, that's cool to hear your perspective. I think it's been interesting seeing my brother's band uh, navigate that over the years um, with Need to Breathe. Um, sure. It, 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 I think their their perspective, because I think everyone has different callings, right? It's like, if I feel right. like, hey, I, need, I am writing an in-the-pocket faith-based book to my congregation or to people who follow my work, that's a different calling than okay, hey, I, w- I want to introduce people to faith who maybe not would, exactly. would have not otherwise seen it, right? And, and so I yeah. think it's, you know, as it relates to, to need to breathe and, the, and how, how I've seen them kind of do it is they said, hey, they grew up in an era where it was just like Christian music just sucked. <laughs> it wasn't good. Yeah. It's like our parents were like, hey, you can't listen to anything with Christian music. And yeah. my brother, it was kind of like, well, but it sucks. Like I don't want to. Yeah, exactly. to music. And and uh, and the the impetus was, you know, the 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 uh, the founders of the band were the, their parents were just like, okay, if you don't like it, make something better. Uh, yeah. And and yeah. they said, all right, we will. And then and then their whole what they felt like their calling was is, hey, let's go into places where uh, in the bars, the clubs, the places where uh, sure. this message isn't getting there, and then be that light. And some of them yeah. were overtly faith-based songs like testify or like multiplied or um difference maker or any of those songs but it's 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 in a place where and so i think that's just interesting because both can work as long as you're you're upfront about what you're doing and 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 lean in and pray about what your calling is uh, and what you're writing about so that's really cool. yeah absolutely absolutely and i think when you're just straight up and you're not trying to do like you said the bait and switch i think then, um, then people, it's very clear. I mean, that's why, like you read, like basically the description of my book, it's like, it's, this is very clear. Either this yeah. is going to apply to you or not, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah. So cool. I love that. What, uh, Jonathan, what was, what's been the hardest part so far of getting the book written and ready to publish? What was the hardest part in that process? And what did you learn from that? Um, you know, well, the getting started part of which it was what we already, we already talked about, <laughs> get, just getting going, um, you know, and I, I'll give you a little plug, your, uh, your concept, I, I, I'm drawing a blank on maybe how you would call it, but basically the circle in the middle, and then you've got all the spokes around, that was a game changer for me. Mm, um, cool. Because once I started doing that, things just started to flow way faster, and way more uh, just well, quickly, but then maybe more efficiently, effectively. Um, and it made the content, I felt like richer. Um, and so that was a, that was a pivotal turn for me that, uh, maybe, and I'm a perfectionist. And so I would, I, before I was doing that, I would write and then I'd go back and I'd rewrite and then, you know, and it just was taking a lot longer. But then mm-hmm. once I kind of figured out how to mind map that whole, chapter and then go back and start you know maneuvering stuff around that really that really sped things up yeah. um the other the other roadblock i had was i it took me a long time to decide am i gonna self-publish or am i gonna try to shop this mm-hmm. and um I, I i wasted probably too much time on that uh to be honest with you i um and and so you know the end result our company the the, the business that i co owned with my father we we ended up deciding that we are going to be the publisher of the book. My dad's written two books previously that are more ministry related. Mine's more just geared toward Christians in general. Um, and so we're going to kind of go back and uh, work on updating those. They're a little bit older. And so we're thinking, well, our company kind of can be this, you know, publisher, but I, I, you know, there's always that dream of like, well, what if you could get a big contract, you know? And, um, and it's, it's one of those things where I just was like, well, let's, why not give it a try? So I spent a time, a lot of time there's a there's a, a very well known Christian author, um, and uh, who worked with this this agent. Actually, this agent has a lot of well known Christian authors. So I thought, man, I'm just going. I'm going to shoot for the moon. And so it just took me a while to get a conversation and to hear back. Um, and then we would have a, follow, a conversation, and there was just big delays in in follow up. And uh, so, uh, you know, I actually had the book fully edited in the summer of 
2021. And it really wasn't until um, basically February of 22 before I, I was like, okay, I'm going self-publish. I'm getting my own designer. I'm running with this thing. Mm-hmm. So I wasted some time admittedly there. And I think that was a learning lesson. Um, but it, I was having trouble making a decision. And, yeah. and I don't know why, um, you know, looking back now, I'm very thankful for the route I've taken. Um, and, um, you know, so I, I don't, I don't regret it, but and maybe that's just part of, you know, you just gotta, you gotta figure it out and you gotta figure out what's going to be best for you. And, and so it just took me a while. So, but those are a couple of things that come to mind immediately. Cool. Nice. Um, and how did you ultimately make that decision to, to go, to go self-publish? <clears throat> Or um, it I guess was technically twofold. self-published, but uh, or a technically published with a publisher, but kind of hybrid type publishing. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's. I mean, it, really, we're all, um, we're all, we're, you know, it's it's basically us publishing it, you know. But um, we went. Um, this is a sidebar, but we went the route where we pre-printed books versus the KDP route. Um, but to make cool. that decision, yeah. I think I just I just I needed to get to the point where. Um, I was kind of done trying to, to get the contract. Um, and I just had to get to that point where I, you know, I was running the numbers and I'm thinking, okay, well, if I could get this size of contract, then it could be worth it. And so I'm playing the numbers game and I talked to, I, I sought counsel from some people and um, uh, one, of, one of my buddies, he said, well, what's the math say? I mean, it was just down to the math. And I thought, well, I, I think the math is saying based on what I know that I need to self-publish. Um, and, uh, you know, so granted, there's more upfront cost, um, but the back end is, you know, there's a, a brighter upside and I still have control. And I, I have a lot of branding potential with the, the phrase arrow striker. Um, and so I've already, I'm already working on additional resources that are going to accompany the book. Mm, so so on the IP, because of the that, IP. yeah, yeah, because of that, I, I felt like it was probably best, it, you sense. know, at least for now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. What, um, any advice from the road ahead for other people who are thinking, Hey, do I self-publish? Do I traditionally publish kind of knowing what you know now? Um, what yeah. would be your advice for other, other people in your shoes? Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of the self-published route. I mean, obviously we all know if you've got a massive platform and you think you can get a contract, you know, it, Hey, maybe, maybe it's worth it. Of course I haven't experienced that yet. So I, I can't speak to that. Um, we have a decent sized platform with our, with our online business that we have to, that helps pastors and churches. And so, um, I kind of had that hope that, well, maybe I'd be able to get something. Um, but we, we never got that far in the process. And, uh, so for me, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a definite fan of self-publishing. Um, I have some friends that did went the KDP route and um, they seem to have had really good success with that. And so um, I can't speak to that really either since we didn't end up doing that. But what I, what I love about the self-publishing is the, the full control um, the, you know, you still own the rights and uh, I have a buddy who uh, was in a different uh, genre, but he had published a book and he said it was just, it was really hard to be able to get the publisher to do some things he wanted to do because he had a back end business uh, related to his book. And so he was thinking, man, if I could give these away uh, 99 cents, whatever, yeah. just to be able to use that as a lead generator. Um, and it, it wasn't easy. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, Especially I don't have a massive, I don't have a massive business uh, beyond just trying to give value and, and motivate people to, to go all out in the walk with God. I mean, I've got these supplemental resources I'm creating. Um, but my book is geared toward, like I said, just Christians, whereas our, 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 our online business is more toward pastors. So there's like some overlap, uh, but I see, it, um, the, you know, the, a guy like you might pick the book up and say, Oh yeah, good read. Maybe get some nuggets out of it. It could be valuable mm-hmm. to you. But um, you're not going to want to go buy my, you know, leaders that church pastor resource necessarily. So yeah. I'm kind of I'm kind of working on two tracks a little bit, yeah. and um, and the things I'm doing to overlap them are, um, I don't know if I should jump into this, but is um, I'm creating a sermon series that a pastor could use, oh, cool. and kind of like a full like a kit, so they That's could really they smart. could um, yeah they could 
Yeah, I, I hope so. They could, um, you know, do a sermon series and it's, it's an arrow striker sermon series, three or four weeks. Uh, and then we would sell bulk boxes of books mm -hmm. um, that they could either give away or they could re you know, we give discounts and then they could sell them and, and recoup their costs. And uh, so there's some other things. We have another uh, six part video series that I'm shooting, I think in about a week, that's going to be for, you know, small groups, Bible studies, you know, those types of things where then um, it's supplemental. So it's not a regurgitation. It's, mm. you know, taking some of the concepts, but then going deeper, taking different that's angles cool. of it. Um, so I'm trying to create this overall package. And then um, I've already got a kid. I've, I've wanted to do kids books. So I've already got a kid's book idea. That's so cool. I, I'm building the brain. I'm building the brand yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, so it's so, overlap, not directly related. Um, it and, is. And, yeah. and, and then using, uh, finding the sweet spot in the marketing to both market to the overlap, but then also uh, gear more towards pastors. So that they'll, uh, I'm assuming, be more beneficial for the business and uh, and all that good yeah. stuff. And, and just backing up just a little bit, um, for those who aren't familiar, um, Jonathan mentioned the um, KDP, that's Kindle Direct Publishing, um, which is when you self-publish, you can print directly through Amazon and through uh, through uh, through their publishing arm of of Kindle Direct Publishing, so KDP. Um, so, yeah. talk you you alluded to this a little bit, but I'd love to hear more um, of how you're tying this book in with uh, your business. Uh, it sounds like it's it's maybe uh, it's you know like you said it's overlap, not to, directly related. Right. Are you tying it into the business? If so, how much? And do you ever have plans in the future to write kind of like the Leaders Dot Church book or uh, the, uh, the church university book that's directly applicable yeah. to that business. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my main thing is, to tie them together is to really work on figuring out who these pastors are that are buying the book and, and then try to move them in over into additional resources. Now our, our main list, uh, email list of, of people that we have, um, obviously we're going to be marketing to them to buy bulk. Um, or, um, you know, individually if, if they want, or like I said, sermon series and stuff like that. Um, we've even thought about some giveaways where if they would, you know, do something, then um, they might be able to get like a free membership to leaders.church for six months or, or whatever. So they'd be able to access that or, or one of our church university courses. Um, so it's just trying to figure out how can I move people because I have these two tracks um, you know, figuring out who those people are that I can then move over to the leaders that church track um, for future business growth, while at the same time, um, moving people over to the Christian track that, you know, we could try to get them to uh, buy the supplemental resources. Uh, but yes, uh, to answer your last question, I do have, um, I do have a lot of other book ideas. And some of the ones that um, are, they are ministry related specifically. And we've got some practical nuggets. Um, I've got some church leadership related book ideas. Um, and that really goes directly in line with our business leaders church because that business is designed to help pastors um, be better leaders in a nutshell. And so um, I've got I've, I've already been kind of just scribbling notes on that. Mm, um, that makes sense. So, and I'll yeah. get there, but I, I figured yeah. I better try to get one book off the ground first, you know, oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. And, and I, I think that probably relates to what you were talking about with redoing some of your, uh, your dad's books as well. Um, yeah, which, exactly. which makes a lot of sense. So yeah. uh, maybe, um, let's talk about a uh, book launch. So at the time of, cool. uh, you know, this interview going live guys, the, the book is either on pre-order. If you're like one of the people that just saw it immediately as this podcast interview came out, um, or as this YouTube um, video hit the YouTube channel, um, or it's it's on sale. If if it's more than a yeah. few days after this is released, it's on sale. So you can grab a copy of the book, Arrow Striker. Um, but can you uh, talk to me about what are you doing to prep for launch and to launch the book successfully? Like what are maybe the top yeah. three areas that you're focusing your efforts? Um, okay, yeah. First one is um, I'm trying to uh, build the launch team. And um, we've got, because of our network of people, um, we've got, uh, we've got a lot of opportunity there, I think. And because our network of people are pastors of the people in their churches, if we get them, um, you know, sharing a post, uh, writing reviews, such, or other things as, such like that, 
that's going to just be able to help us because then that's their, those are their people. And so that's going to really exponentially um, move things forward uh, in theory. So building that launch team and of course, friends and family as well. Um, I, I'm shooting for 300 people that would be willing to commit to writing a review, um, sharing X number of uh, upcoming posts that we've got. And uh, so we're, we're in the, as we're recording this, we're in the process of all of that. Um, a second piece that I'm, I'm really excited about, um, in fact, I might just show you, I, I have it here, is I'm um, currently working with, uh, or getting ready to give the materials to those endorsers and the, and the um, person who forwarded my book. Um, and so actually, right after this call, I'm actually getting ready to have that meeting, but we put together this box. And so it's got the Whoa. arrows on the top of the box. And then I don't know if we can see the yeah. arrow striker and gl gloss. And then so what happens is, um, you know, you open up the box and um, you got a little letter from me. Cool. And then under it, under it is uh, the book. And um, awesome. so and then so because I'm talking about striking your arrows and making a difference, um, then what, I, what I've done is we got a little ten dollar bill in a plastic sleeve and that's going to be in the book. And, um, and so my letter basically says, Hey, here's some fun. Uh, we want you to strike your arrows and give this 10 bucks to somebody, you know, buy a coffee for someone, give it to a student, uh, pay for, or, you know, give 10 bucks to a mom at the gas, gas pump, just something wow. kind of clever. That's cool. Um, my, so, I mean, I'm kind of obviously showing my cards here. I'm hoping that it will stick out. So yeah. As I said, because, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, you get and we even would get stuff occasionally where you, you want to send something to some influencers or, or people that we have. I'm going to shoot for some that I'm kind of like distantly connected with, acquainted with um, and just to help hopefully spread the word. And so mm -hmm. in, in addition to the endorsers yeah. um, and, and that's just kind of a way to be say thanks and have some fun that's great. um yeah. kind of something different so yeah uh that's something I'm, I'm pretty excited about awesome so it yeah. looks like influencer boxes it looks like um launch team you said was there one other th thing that you said that um that's an area of focus for the launch um you know what what um let's see what was the third thing i was going to say um trying to blank Right now, um, oh yeah, well, we're just, we're building out all of our, um, our tech stuff, our social media. Yeah. Um, we're doing it, we're putting together, coming out soon, a book trailer. It's gonna be a really cool cinematic book trailer. And so we're gonna try to leverage all of these pieces um, and, and get the team helping us just to, uh, just to blast it. And so then at that point, you know, and Facebook ads, we're gonna do the yeah. Amazon ads. You know, we're doing all the, the stuff that you, you normally would do. So that's, yeah, that's probably nothing new under the sun, but cool. um, hopefully all of that combined will, yeah. will give us a big, a big impact. Yeah. Um, and so last couple of questions I have for you. Um, so I know your dad mentioned that um, he's reading the book. Is that the, is that the new book? Is that the second edition or he's reading the, the, the blue and the, the first edition? Do you know? Blue. Blue, okay. yeah. Oh man, he's got the, yeah. we got to get, we got to get both. You get, you don't have a copy <laughs> man, of we're the, old of the school. second edition yet. <laughs> Um, oh man, this is so much better. All right. I just checked while we were on this interview and we've got one coming your way to, uh, oh, look at that. I'll confirm the address right after this, uh, after the interview, okay. <laughs> not trying to give your address out. Um, but, yeah. uh, so, so we got a copy of the new book, um, uh, published and check out, cause this will be very applicable. It'll be rolling right into, uh, your launch. So I'd recommend yeah. checking Tell out. Tell me Th there's a part, um, so there's the how to launch your book section, which is chapter 17, 18, uh, 19, and 20. Chapter 20 on the road to your first 100 reviews, that'll be really, really helpful. And okay. then those next few chapters on, around selling books after you launch. So that's one of the big okay. differences of the second edition of Publish versus the first edition is a lot more launch and sell more books related content. Um, so um, I, I, got a, I, I got a copy coming your way. Um, Thank you. It, it might Love be fat. You, you know, you honestly, you might be faster to grab one off Amazon. Uh, my package <laughs> is not coming in two days. Um, but uh, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, you read the first edition. You, uh, I think, posted about it online. What was your top yep. one or two takeaways from that book that were helpful in writing this book? Um, 
Well, the one that I probably already articulated a little bit was the whole mind mapping process. I mean, yeah. that was game changing for me. Um, and I actually, I don't, you know, now that I say that, I don't know if that was more in the book or if that was more just some of the video content I've watched from you, but it's in the book. Um, yeah, it's in the book. Okay, First okay. edition and second um, edition. It's a much better, it's a, in the second edition, I call it the more writing method, more as an acronym for mind map, outline, rough draft editing. It's just like a little bit okay. of a sharper concept. Uh, but yeah. yeah, that was in the first edition. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that was just huge, man. I mean, and, and thank you for that because it, it, it just, I couldn't believe how much easier it made it. Um, and you know, and you just, and, and I wasn't as fast probably as you recommend. I still, I took more time. I was like, well, let me just, you know, just sit here and let's just think about this and okay, now let's think about that. And, um, but it's amazing how much e easier it made it to write. And, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I've done, you know, I went to Bible college then I went to seminary, you know, I've written paper after paper and all that. And, um, you know, it was, I was like, man, I wish I kind of knew that back then. Cause that would have been, that would have probably made things easier. Um, so that's a, that was a huge takeaway. Of course, we're doing the launch uh, team like you talked about, but then another thing I didn't mention, and this is probably another thing that would have answered your previous question too, is, um, wanting to put like a launch party together. And, um, so I'm actually pretty excited about that, trying to figure out how we're going to get that squeezed in here. Um, but that's part of that's on the radar. And I thought that was just a, a fun idea. Um, cause I told my wife the other day, you know, it's like, it's just feeling all the pressure of, man, there's a lot to do to get this thing off the ground. But I told her, I said, I want to have fun along the way. Um, you know, I don't want this to be so burdensome that I lose the heart and passion for why I did it in the first place. And I want it to be fun. And the launch party is, is one of those ways where I think that can help keep the fun in perspective and know that, Hey, this is, this is, this is an achievement. It's a great accomplishment, but it's also um, a, a fun journey. So really wanting to enjoy the journey along the way. I love that. I love that. Well, Jonathan, this has been awesome. I'm excited for your launch. It's been cool hearing a behind the scenes yeah. of, uh, of how it happened, how the book came together and, and how you're launching the book. So parting question, where can people go um, to buy the book? Um, to support the launch and then maybe any other places that would be helpful uh, for them to go as well. Right. Thank, well, thank you. Um, Amazon obviously is the easy place to go. It's available there. We've got the paperback, the ebook, and the audiobook will all be available there if, uh, if they pop on. And then uh, our our uh, arrow our website is arrowstriker.com. And that's where we'll have some of the other resources as well. So either of those places is is great. Arrowstriker.com. Uh, the book is called Arrow Striker. Uh, check it out on Amazon. Uh, grab a copy. Uh, or gift it to a friend. Jonathan, you're the man. Appreciate you. Hey, appreciate you. Thank you so much for all you do. Yes, sir.